greetings everybody today our topic of discussion is airway management in the general surgery so here we will study different types of airway management like let's suppose the non-invasive and the invasive procedures but before that we have to um, study the airway management if uh, suppose someone got an accident or any type of trauma and uh, the patient came to the emergency uh, what we uh, what we will have to do first to prevent uh, uh, his strong back fall so there are two procedures which is the one one is called chain left procedure chain left procedure and the second one is called jaw thrust procedure jaw thrust procedure these two procedures are done just to prevent the back uh, fall of the uh, tongue and uh, always remember the chain left procedure is done in the patient with the cervical spine injury this is done in a patient which has no cervical spine injury always remember in the jaw thrust is done in the patient with cervical spine injury like uh, why the chin lift is contraindicated in a patient with cervical spine injury because if suppose uh, uh, in uh, near the cervical spine there is medulla oblongata near the cervical spine there is medulla oblongata and you know in the medulla oblongata there is breathing center so if uh, uh, um, there is chain left procedure in uh, cervical spine injury then there is a chance that uh, the breathing center is disturbed further and you uh, you can um, further uh, uh, complicate the process of breathing the other procedure is jaw thrust and it is usually done in the patient with the cervical spine injury so this is preferable in uh, cervical spine injury now our topic is non-invasive procedures uh, in which the first one is oropharyngeal airway management and in oropharyngeal airway management we have to insert a tube inside the uh, patient and uh, this tube has two end one end is outside the buccal cavity outside the mouth uh, and in the midpoint of the incisor teeth and the other end is uh, inside the uh, mouth on the pharynx is its insertion is on the pharynx and the um, uh, advantage of this uh, is just to maintain the airway of the patient and always remember one thing that oropharyngeal airway management is done in a patient who is unconscious just to prevent the um, uh, big fall of the tongue the second airway management is nasopharyngeal 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 airway management is done in the patient if suppose the oropharyngeal is contraindicated and this is also just to hold the tongue and prevent the big fall of the tongue. So this is the second non-invasive airway management. The third one is face mask ventilation. Face mask ventilation. So the question is when the face mask ventilation is done it is actually done when the airway is completely fine when the airway is completely fine but there is problem with the lungs airway is completely fine there is no problem with the airway but the problem is with the lungs and the patient has a severe hypoxia severe uh, oxygen deficiency then the face mask ventilation is done the other is the other non-invasive procedure is supraglottic supraglottic airway devices supraglottic airway devices always remember that the supraglottic airway devices insertion is directly on the vocal cord or the larynx of the patient and it gives direct oxygen to the larynx it gives direct oxygen to the larynx oxygen to the larynx directly oxygen to the larynx directly and it has a supraglottic airway devices is actually two types one is classical one is classical and the second one is flexible the use of both depending on the condition of the patient always remember that the supraglottic airway devices can't be used in unconscious patient because if the patient vomit then there is a chance of expiration from the larynx directly to the trachea so the supraglottic airway devices is contraindicated or can't be done in unconscious patient the second procedure is the invasive procedure in the management of the airway the second one is invasive 
procedure and in the invasive procedure the first one is ETT the first one is ETT and the most common one and the most preferable one is endotracheal intubation ETT is called endotracheal intubation endotracheal intubation remember some points before inserting the ETT into the patient it uh, should be done only when you you uh, had given the sedation to the patient like uh, general anesthesia first you should give sedation to the patient and uh, then you will check the airway through the laryngoscope then after that you will insert the ATT the first one is give sedation to the patient give sedation to the patient second check the airway check the airway and check for any type of obstruction in the airway and then you can also check the airway by laryngoscope by laryngoscope and you can also check the airway by the bronchoscope by the bronchoscope just to view the airway and to find out any type of obstruction you can only insert the endotracheal intubation when you had given the patient sedation you have checked the airway through laryngoscope you have checked the airway through the bronchoscope and always remember that avoid avoid ATT if suppose there is any type of the airway injury already to the patient and the advantage of the ETT is that it has no chances of it has no chances of aspiration there is no chances of aspiration in ATT aspiration chances uh, means that the fluid or the food will go to the will go to the trachea the fluid will go to the fluid to the trachea chance is very less so this is the most preferable technique and always remember that once when you inserted the ATT the endotracheal tube the patient can't breathe by itself the patient after the ATT can't breathe by itself so the patient must be shifted to the uh, ventilation the patient must be shifted to the ventilation after the ATT the second invasive procedure is tracheostomy 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 is actually a surgical uh, surgical procedure and it is done when there is upper uh, airway obstruction it is done when there is upper airway obstruction upper airway obstruction and how is this procedure done a direct incision is given direct incision is given in the trachea direct incision to the trachea and a tube is attached and a tube is attached to the tube is inserted to maintain the ventilation to maintain the ventilation so these are these are all about the invasive and the non-invasive procedure in the uh, airway management uh, uh, for a patient in the general surgery